Hi all, I'm Anna Mary Williford, one of seven librarians at the University of Montevallo's Carmichael Library. This short screencast video is intended to give you the basics about how to contact a University of Montevallo librarian, as well as what types of resources you can find through searching our discovery system and how to locate them once you find them online. So you can begin by locating our homepage, which is the URL is libguides.montevallo.edu. And that's what it is up on the screen right now. Um, or you can also just do a quick Google search for Carmichael Library Montevallo and it should pop right up. So once you get to the homepage, um, the first thing that I want to show you on here is that there are several different ways you can contact us for help with your research. You can chat with us, you can email us, um, or you can ask for help in person either by stopping by the research help desk, which is on the first floor of the library if you're on campus, um, or you can also make an appointment ahead of time to come and sit down with one of us for more in-depth research needs. Um, so chatting with us, especially if you are an online student and not on campus very often, is probably the quickest and easiest way. So during normal business hours, um, there's usually a librarian online for chat from about 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, and the way that you do that is from the home page. You'll look for this green chat button right here and you can click on that and the chat window should pop right up. So you can put your name in if you want um, and then type your question, whatever that is. So if it's, you know, where do I find the best articles for my research? Or if it's, you know, I can't remember how to make an appointment with a librarian or if it's even just what hours are you open? Anything that you need to ask us, you can chat that in here and, and somebody will um, get right back to you. If it's late at night or on Saturdays when there's no librarians on chat um, and you have a question that you don't want to forget about, you can also email us. So you can always email any of the librarians individually and you can find our email addresses under About Us and by clicking on Departments and Staff. But if you click this link right here above the chat button and fill out this form, um, so put your question, any other details that you need, make sure to type your email address correctly because that is the way that we'll get back in touch with you. And if you make a typo, it just will delay our response a little bit because we have to try to figure out who you actually are. Um, but when you submit this form, it sends it to all of the librarians' email addresses at once. So that way, whoever's the best one to answer your question, or in most cases, just whoever sees it first, you know, whoever is first in the next morning and sees it, um, will get right back to you. So that is also a very good way to contact one of us. Um, I mentioned that you can come by the research help desk. So on the first floor of Carmichael Library, the, when you come in the doors on the first floor, the big desk to your left is the circulation desk where you can check books out. And then the smaller desk to the right is the research help desk. And there is usually a librarian or a library staff member there to help you with research if you're in the library. You can also, especially if you're coming from off campus or a long way, or you know that your question is gonna need um, a little bit of extra attention, you can also make an appointment to, so that you know that one of us is going to be available to help you. So the way that you do that is from the home page. If you click on help, you have a few options here. Um, so you want to choose the one that says meet with us. And when you click on that, it'll take you to this form. And there's a picture of the research help desk in case you wanted to know what that looks like. If you have been to the library before, hopefully you recognize that. Um, but if you scroll down some, Here's where you can fill out the information for scheduling a research consultation. A research consultation is basically just a fancy way of saying you're going to sit down, you know, to ask a librarian questions about what you're what you're looking for. Um, so the more information you can give us when you fill out this form, the better, because that way we'll be prepared for you and we'll know what you want. Um, and it is just a, a great use of everybody's time that way so that when you come in, they already kind of know what you want and have some suggestions for you, maybe. Um, so that is always an option, but you know, just dropping by or chatting or emailing are also fine ways too. So if you have further questions about anything that you see in this video, or if when you start searching, if you think you're not finding what you need, um, please don't hesitate to contact one of the librarians. Like I mentioned, there are seven of us and we're all um, happy to help you with your research. So how do you find things? Um, from the library homepage, which again is libguides.montevallo.edu, there's this big main search box that will be the first thing that you see. And that will find for you just what it says, books, articles, and more at UM Library. So it's all of our collections that we have here. It's all the books that are physically in the library building. It's all of the eBooks that we subscribe to online. It's all of the articles in all of the journals and all of the databases that we subscribe to, and a lot of other stuff besides that. So 
when you do a search in here, let's say we click in the box and put in a topic. You wait a few seconds, your search will pop up. And depending on what you type in, you could really get a ton of stuff. So in this case, I put in voting rights, which is a pretty broad topic, and I get about 1.6 million results. So less than I probably would have gotten searching Google, but still a lot, right? So you're going to want to look at ways to filter that down. One thing that you don't want to scroll past on this page is the research starter, which will pop up first usually. Depending on what you type in, you might not see one of these, or the, the what pops up might not be super relevant to what you search. But in most cases, if you search like a person's name or a place or a subject, um, this research starter will come up. Please don't scroll past that. I think a lot of people sometimes, you know, just disregard it as an ad or something like that. But this is actually a really good way if you are researching a topic you don't know a whole lot about yet, um, you can learn a lot about it from clicking on this link. So this research starter is from the Salem Press Encyclopedia, and you'll see that a lot, or there's some other encyclopedias that they use on here. So um, it's an academic resource as opposed to Wikipedia or somewhere like that, but it operates kind of the same way that Wikipedia does because it gives you some background information about whatever it was that you searched. So in this case, it's talking about suffrage, which is, you know, voting movements, and it's telling you about the background of it and an overview of the topic, and maybe most importantly, at the end, there's going to be usually a bibliography that maybe points you toward other resources that you can use. So again, if you don't know a whole lot about your topic yet and you're not sure where you want to focus in on, reading the research starter can be a really great way to do that. So once you take a peek at that, then um, as far as finding things that are actually in the library collections. So there's two main types of things that you're going to find in here. The first is items that are physically actually in the library that you would have to come and check out. Or the other option is the resources that are online that you have access to as a student here. So if it's in the library somewhere, you will want to look for one of these location boxes right here. Okay, and location, it is only going to have a location box if it's actually physically located in the library somewhere. So there's three parts of the location box, all of which are important for finding what you're looking for. The first part of the location box is going to tell you where in the library it is. So the majority of the books that you'll find in the library, let me scroll down a little bit to see if I can find one that's there. Oh, and this little chat box will pop up sometimes to remind you. Okay, so you're going to have um, two main types of things that are going to pop up. One will be items that are actually physically located inside the library that you would have to come and check out. And those you'll know because it'll have this location box right here. So we'll only show you a location box if it's actually in the library somewhere. If not, you will not see that box and instead you'll just usually see a link to full text or something like that which would tell you that it's an online only resource so keep in mind that even if you're an online student or you're never on campus or you're researching from off campus even if you are um, usually an in-class student but you're off campus for whatever reason doing your research any of the library resources you can access off campus as well as on campus so any of the online articles or ebooks or anything like that when you try to click on the PDF from off campus to open them, it just will prompt you to log in first. So you put in the same username and password that you use to log into your Montevallo email or any other university account, and it should take you right in. If you're off campus and you're having trouble accessing those, that's a great thing to send us a chat about um, because sometimes bugs come up. But for the most part, you should be able to get right in and view any of these resources, which includes the articles like this one here or the ebooks right here, which more about those in a moment. But first of all, items that are physically located in the library, there's three main parts of this box that you're going to want to look at. The first one tells you where in the library it is. So in this case, it's in the Young People's Collection, which is the children's books that are on the main floor, or which is the first floor of the library. For the most part, books that you find in the discovery system here are going to be on the second floor, which is the top floor of the library in the main circulating collection. But we do have some other collections, such as this one, so that's why it's a good idea to pay attention to this part of the location box. Then you'll want to look at the call number, which is going to tell you 
where in that collection it is. So this whole number is what you would want to um, write down or a screenshot on your phone or however you want to save it. But that will be the what you need to find the book in the shelves. And then, of course, check to see if it's available or not, because if it's not available, then it won't be on the shelf when you try to go find it. If there's a book that you need that is not available, you can order it through Interlibrary Loan, um, and you can do that from the main page. So besides the things that are physically in the library, there's also a lot of online resources that will come up in the discovery system. Things like this that are articles, you can just click the PDF to view. Um, and in a later video, I'll show you more in depth how to find articles in databases from our web page, website. But um, the discovery system, when you do the search from this box on the library homepage, it searches all the databases at once. So you'll get a lot of articles, um, which could be good or bad, just depending on what you need and what you're looking for. Um, but sometimes it's a good idea to just search one database at a time as far as articles go, but you definitely will find articles in this in searching on the discovery system here. And then another type of thing that you'll find that may be useful for you are um, ebooks. So we have a pretty good size ebook collection here, and you'll see those pop up a lot in your searches. And you'll know that it's an ebook instead of a regular book because, first of all, it will say ebook collection right there. And also, we don't see a location box down here, right? So it's not physically in the library somewhere, it's online only. And it'll give you the option to either open the PDF. Or in some cases, depending on the publisher's rules and restrictions, you can even download the book. Um, so any ebooks that you find through here, again, if you're off campus, it'll prompt you to log in to access those, but you will be able to read them on whatever device you're using. Um, just keep in mind that publishers have different permissions as far as what you can download or view or save or print or any of those things. So in this case, this publisher would only let you um, print or save up to 100 pages out of the book. Sometimes they don't let you do any. Sometimes you can do the whole thing. It just really varies depending on the publisher. Um, so just be aware of that. But you should always be able to get back to it and just view the PDF. If you wanted to save this ebook to come back to you later, um, over on the right hand side of the screen, you can click on permalink and a link to the ebook will pop up in this little box here. You can copy and paste that link, email it to yourself. Um, and that way you have it to get back to anytime you want. Okay, so that is ebooks in a nutshell. And if you are looking just for books in particular, if for whatever reason your professor said they want, you know, print books only, or you have to have at least one print book, over on the left, you can limit by source type. So you can narrow down just to that. So if you don't see books at first, you can click where it says show more and it should show up there. And if you click on books and click on update, then it should take out all of those, you know, PDFs and other online resources. And now it's showing you books only. So again, sometimes um, you'll have the location box. In this case, this book looks like we don't actually own here. So you would need to request it through interlibrary loan, which I mentioned earlier. So you can narrow down just to books and um, and then that's all your search will show. Okay, so that is the discovery system in a nutshell. And it will say, it tells you right up here where you're searching. You're searching the discovery service for University of Montevallo in case you forgot where you were. Um, but it's showing you again, all of the print collections that we have in the library and our online collections. And in the next video, I will talk again about um, how to search a little bit more in depth for articles. Okay, and again, if you have questions, please feel free to get in touch. And since I did mention interlibrary loan, I just wanna point out that as a student at the University of Montevallo Library, you have access to all of the books that we own in our collections, but also if there's a book that you need that we don't own, or if we only have one copy, but somebody already has it checked out, it is definitely an option for you to request it from another library. So back on the Montevallo homepage, if you go under services, you can click on interlibrary loan, which is just a fancy way of saying we're borrowing it from another library. And that is a service that's no extra cost to you. You don't have to pay extra to borrow books or articles from other places, um, but it's worth taking just a minute to create an account because that way you'll have one. So if you click create account, 
click create account again. And then click on the second tab. Um, fill this out and create your account and then that way you have it. So anytime that you come across a book that we might not have or an article that you want to order, which I'll talk about in the next video, um, then you can order it really easily from here. Okay, so that concludes this video about how to contact librarians and search basics. Thank you.